I was considered like a black sheep of the fam family, mm. straight up, right? Because because no degree, no college, like you know, no education, no skills. Like it was just like, okay, we'd be lucky if he gets a if he becomes a supervisor in a factory. What was your biggest year? Twenty twenty two. How much did you make in that year? Like Seven million. Something. In this episode of The Way of the CPT Consistently Profitable Trader, we have Roger Banks, a trader and businessman who has amassed a net worth of over 50 million. His first big success came through trading, but he utilized his vision to create an ecosystem of businesses that help the trading community in several ways, including live trading streams on YouTube, trading tools, and a regulated broker. He is the owner of Dominion Markets, who is a member of the top 100 trusted financial institutions in the Middle East. He was also recently awarded the esteemed honor as one of the top 50 Forex CEOs. In this episode, Roger shares how he amassed millions trading only gold and GJ, how he would approach prop firms and a lot more. Without further ado, let's talk to Roger. Before we get started with the podcast, I'd like to talk to you about Funded Next. Funded Next is a disruptor in the prop industry with two unique offerings. Number one, they're the only prop firm in the industry that pays traders 15% of their challenge profits. Traders generally don't like trading during the challenge phase because they don't actually earn any money. Funded Next has addressed traders' concerns by allowing them to earn money during the challenge. On average, traders earn two to three times the challenge fee when they successfully pass and get their first payout for example the cost of a 50k account is around 299 and the 15 percent profit split from passing the challenge is 975 it's a one to three roi not including the profits earned from the simulated funded account number two they promise that traders will receive payouts within 24 hours from the request or they will give them $1,000. This is a bold guarantee and sets them apart from many firms. Funded Next is one of the few prop firms that provides balance-based drawdown and they emphasize that their trading conditions are amongst the best due to them owning dedicated servers for MT4 and MT5. They pride themselves on providing raw spreads and the lowest commissions in the prop firm industry Industry. They also are expected to release an integration with TradingView in December in which traders will be able to execute trades and do their charting directly from the Funded Next dashboard. If you want to take a challenge with a company that is disrupting the industry and creating opportunity globally, diversify or scale your prop firm accounts to new levels, get access to your account within seconds and 10% off by clicking the link in the description. So welcome to another podcast episode. The guest today does not need an introduction. Um, he's helped me since uh, the beginning of my trading career from the live streams. The Magic Keys was a game changer. I watched him grow into a million dollar trader, award winning businessman. I couldn't come to Dubai without meeting with you. Uh, so thanks for uh, accepting my invitation, Roger. Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah. So when I think about you, I think of this quote from the book, um, The Magic of Thinking Big. And he says, believe it can be done. When you believe something can be done, your mind will find the ways to do it. Believing a solution paves the way to solution. So 10 years trading plus, $10 million or so or more in trading profits, owning a brokerage, owning magic keys, right? A lot of success. So when I see Roger starting off, I hear about your uh, sales, your, your door to door sales career yeah. coming all the way from there to where you are now. I think about a, a big thinker, creative thinker, right? So you, you've been an, insp an inspiration for myself, as well as the audience that I have is mostly um, prop traders. I think that myself and them can learn a lot from you, and I'm confident that you have a lot to share. So I just want to start off like with your upbringing, because I'm, I'm a big believer that your upbringing shapes who you are yeah. uh, and your evolution. So can you just kind of tell us like where are you from, how you came up? Yeah, so basically I was born in Pakistan. Um, I'm not going to say we were very... Like, we were comfortable, right? Like, we weren't poor. We had a car. We had a home. We went to private schools. You know, we were, like, a pretty good middle-class family. But at the same time, we still worried about bills. Yeah. Like, like, you know, like, like so whenever a bill would come in, we would still, like, my dad would still say, hey, the bill was too high. We need to turn the lights off. We need to turn the fans on the slow so mm -hmm. we can control the bills, right? So we didn't have money, money, but we had money to be comfortable yeah. you know and um the most earliest 
thing that I can remember of my childhood from a business perspective was that my father, whenever we would go out to eat at like, you know, evening time, like a family time, he would go to the store and he would raise the shutters of the store. He would go in, he would get some money like cash and then we would go out to eat. Uh, right. Okay. So that's yeah. something I remember. And I always used to think that, OK, this is our store. It goes there. This is where the business is done yeah. and the business generates income yeah. for us to go have a nice meal. Yeah. So he owns his own business. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Right. So so I think that has really shaped how my life is now and how I see things and how like, you know, we've been very successful at running multiple multi-million dollar businesses. Yeah. So from idea to hand, you have an idea, you put it to work and then it feeds you. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then how did you go from there to trading? So my Pakistani culture is like this. Right. So you go to school, you go to college, you go to university after university, you get a job. And then that's how you go. Right. But yeah. I guess my father, he had a business. So I guess his whole thing was that he's going to build a business and the business is going to be run by his sons, you know, mm -hmm. to, to pass on the torch. Yeah. And um, I guess that's what he wanted. But I wasn't like I wanted to be my own man. Right. Yeah. Like I I didn't want anyone to say that um, I got things handed down to me other yeah. than the opportunities. Right. Yeah. So. Um, we moved to Canada. I guess we moved to Canada because my father wanted his family to have like a better life. You know, so we moved to Canada. I didn't graduate there. I ended up leaving university mm -hmm. and um, like I left university because I uh, left some years. Like a lot of my years were wasted because like, you know, once you're in, in university in one country, you transfer credits to another country. And in Canada, they only accepted one semester. Hmm. So in Pakistan, I was in seven semesters. They accepted one semester. So okay. that put me like three years behind. Bang. Yeah, bang. exactly. Yeah. So I left. I had to quit. I told them, hey, this is not for me. It's not going to work out. I want to make money. It's like, what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm going to go work on the oil rigs. your parents, right? Asking, what are you going to do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So um, worked on the oil rigs. Now, from that point onwards, my whole mindset was that, okay, I don't have a degree. I have one opportunity that I'm in Canada, which is pretty big. I have no degree. I have no skills. You know, I can't speak properly because I had a little bit of a lisp. I still have a lisp and I used to uh, stutter a lot. Mm, okay. Right. So I couldn't speak. All I could do was I could work with my hands. Mm. That's it. So yeah. worked on the oil rigs, did that. Um, and then like, you know, uh, then there was an opportunity where people in, well, kids, I would say like 20 to 23 year old guys, kids, you know, they were doing door-to-door -door sales and they were making some great money, right? Mm -hmm. They're making like about $9,000 a week, $5,000 a week. And back then where I'm making like 7,000 a month, I'm yeah. thinking, man, like shit, that's, that's a lot of money, Yeah, you know? So they were doing sales jobs, you know? And at that time I told my dad, Hey, like, you know what I'm going to do with the sales job. They're like, listen, these are just young kids, right? Young kids, 20 to 23, 24 years old, making like, you know, like, 10, 12,000 a month. It's not possible, mm. you know, but then you also got to look at it this way, right? Now, our parents, they come from an age where you really work hard for your money. Yeah. Necessarily, you're not working smart for your money. You're yeah. working hard for your money. You're working, you know, decades to get to the point where you get a home and then you're going to spend your whole lifetime to pay off that house, yeah. right? Only 1% is going to start a business yeah. and be wealthy, right? Yep. Everyone else is going to work for them. So he didn't see it that way, yeah, you know, yeah, and I don't yeah. blame him because that's the whole mentality. Yeah, that's where they come from. Exactly. So, you know, like did door door sales, got really good at it. You know, in the beginning, there was some, you know, hardships and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, during my door to door sales, there was someone I met. He was making way more than me. And I was like, wait, what's going on <laughs> over here now? You know. <laughs> yeah. So this whole struggle of okay he's making more okay what's he doing right how yeah. can i incorporate myself in him yeah you know and that's did, how we so did you have a family at the time or it was just you like a wife kids or anything no like it's just me and my wife okay it, it, just it, you and your wife you were married at the time yeah yeah you're doing doing door, door door sales exactly were you like making a good living doing door door sales or still kind of um in the beginning it was very very tough yeah because uh, like imagine you're going to someone's door you're going to someone's door and if you see a big house with a with a Dodge 
Charger park there or like a Dodge Ram park there, automatically you think, okay, this is going to be a mean guy. Mm -hmm. He's got a nice house with a big truck and an aggressive car park. So I'm not going to knock on that house because, you know, in the beginning, you don't know who's going to answer the door. Yeah. Right. So in the beginning, it was pretty tough because I had low Mm self-confidence because I've never talked to someone in that way. Yeah. You know, but then the first month was very difficult. I made no sales at all. And just imagine, right, like you leave your home at 9 a.m. and you go and you're supposed to knock on 100 doors to get some sales and you get no sales for one month. Yeah. Every day you leave at 9, you come home at around 8.30, 9 p.m. and everyone's asking you, hey, did you get any sales today? Or, or did you get any sales today? Oh, by the, by the way, this is factory hiring and you can go work in that factory, at least it's going to be some stable income. Yeah. Right? Because you got a wife, yeah, right? Yeah. You, you got you to gotta take care of those needs. Bro, I remember when I got married, right? And um, now, I'm not going to say that I never had money. I had money, but there were some, you know, some spells in your life happen when yep. you don't have money, right? Yep. So we wouldn't buy the, you know, 500 milliliter bottle of shampoo. Yeah. We would buy the, you know, 250 or whatever, like the smaller the one, smaller because one, yeah. I, I don't want to spend a, yeah. a big amount, you know. But then I was like, OK, no, like, you know, there are people who've done it in front of me. They're making money from sales. Yeah, I could do this, too. Yeah, there's there's nothing stopping me. Yeah, because, bro, listen, like at the end of the day, there's no one stopping you from making money. Yeah, there's no one's going to stop you from being successful. Yeah, it's just you. Yeah, it's, it's what you said in the beginning that that you're going to become what you think. Yeah. Right. So I knew that these kids are making money because yeah. I was the old, like I was one of the oldest ones, you know, yeah. I was like maybe like 26, 27 at the time. Yeah. And I was like, I can do this too. So one month I sacrificed, you know, in, in a way, I think that one month I spent to learn how to speak, learn how to negotiate, learn how to learning how skills, to basically, um, get good at high pressure sales. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it seems like, okay, what, I, what you're describing is I see faith, like a level of faith, like you're looking into the future. You're saying, OK, I don't see the benefits of it right now, but I seen that somebody else has done it. So I'm yeah. going to I'm going to continue. Then persistence. persistence. It's like you have the persistence to see, OK, no results like day after day after day. You probably like stuttered. You had the list. You yep. had a lack of confidence. Right. Yeah. And you're just banging on people's doors banging like that's. Doors. People probably slammed the doors and probably had mean things to say. Man, right? we would go to like small towns, right? And most of these small towns were racist people. Dang. You know, they'd Dang. open the yeah. door and they ask, where are you from? You know? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean where you're from? <laughs> I'm from Ontario Standards. They're like, that's Ontario Standards. Shut the door. Dang. Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, yeah, so it, was. It's, it seems like that sort of prepared you. Yeah. Because all the things you described, like showing up to the charts, no results losses right Loss. but you were building skill day after day after exactly. day and then you reach the point where you start making money right yeah. so then okay so sales you met a guy he, he was trading he was making more money how'd you go from there like so he's making money um uh and and i was like okay this is interesting right yeah. and then i messaged him like you know my really good friend ted right i messaged him i'm like hey you know what is this He's like, oh, this is like, you know, you're trading currencies. And I'm like, oh, okay, what software are you trading currencies on? And he's like, MetaTrader. I'm like, oh, okay, interesting. So let me download MetaTrader. I got MetaTrader and then I asked him, okay, so what's a brokerage, right? And he's like, well, you know, brokerages that they, you make an account, you deposit money, they, they allow you to trade. I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, so who should I go with? He's like, well, I'm with IC markets. I'm like, okay, I'll go with IC markets too. I'm like, awesome. So I went with IC Markets and deposited money. And I'm like, okay, so what should I buy or sell? He's like, I don't know. Just go look at the instrument. <laughs> <laughs> so I was asking the same dumbass questions that people ask me. Yeah. Right? I'm yeah. Like, okay, what should I do? Yeah. And there was one question I asked him. So I was up like maybe like 30 or $40. Uh, and I had like multiple 0.02 lots open. Right? I think I had like four or five of them open. And I messaged him, I'm like, hey, bro, listen, so I have these four or five positions open and total I'm up like, I don't remember whether it was like $34 or $340, right? And I'm up this amount. So if I close all these positions, I make this money, right? He's like, yep. I'm like, oh, perfect. This is awesome. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, you come from door to door and then 
you transfer to a like a profession that you can just make money from the phone. Yeah, but also, right. I wasn't afraid of learning a new skill. So I, I see a pattern like, okay, you, you move from Pakistan, then you have to make an adjustment. Yeah. Right. And then you move into sales or whatever. You were in some profession and you dropped out of uni university. Then you went to sales and you have to make a lot of adjustments. Yeah. So it seems like I see that pattern, especially with you opening up, you know, new businesses. It, it, it seems like that's that's the journey of the successful traders. They're able to make adjustments mm -hmm. and ramp up in something like pretty fast and be persistent, like ahead of losses. Right. Would you say like your sales career prepared you to be successful with trading or was it something else more? I think there should be a drive in you, mm -hmm. right? If you don't have a, if you don't have a reason why you're doing certain things, yeah. you're never going to be able to do certain things yeah. because I was considered like a black sheep of the fam family mm -hmm. straight up. Okay. Right. Because, because no degree, no college, like, you know, no education, no skills. Like it was just like, okay, we'd be lucky if he gets a, if he becomes a supervisor in a factory, mm. we'd be lucky with that. We'd be okay yeah. with that. Mm. Right. So there was this internal drive to prove people wrong yeah you know in yeah. a way that okay like you know i like like we can do great things yeah because like a lot of guys like you know they just give up yeah they're they just do. like man like life is so hard life is tough what are we gonna do just man up yeah right man yeah. up and man up. and try to see what you have and just play with that because like yeah. you know like a, i think like a lot of times people focus on the things they can't control yeah, they don't focus on the things they can control. That's right. What yeah. you can control is the opportunities that are there in front of you. Yeah. Right. Like your discipline, consistency. Like it's like if you have cards and the cards are not good cards, you got to learn to play to around play, that. Yeah. With whatever you have. Yeah. 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 And like if you don't have the drive yeah, to learn drive. new things, to learn new skills, to put your ego out the door and say, OK, like, you know what? I'm at the bottom now and let me start at the bottom. And let me see if I can really get good at that. Yeah. You know, so. So how did you keep the drive going, like the passion? Like you, you hear about Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant. Yeah. These guys like had a chip on their shoulder. Yeah. And it just drove them constantly. They're practicing in the dark. They're practicing at night, in the middle of the night, et cetera. Like, were you thinking about being the black sheep and proving the parents wrong or the family wrong all the time? Bro, I just wanted to be the best. Mm. You know, okay. let me put it just that way. I just yeah. wanted to be the best at whatever I was doing because okay here's how i think right here's how i think me being the oldest person in the family well the the eldest sibling in the, the fam sibling, yeah. family right i think it's the entire family is on my shoulders yeah right and i can't let them down that goes from my wife to my kids to my brother to their kids yeah. and i've even told them that hey listen if one of you guys die I got your kids back. Mm. You know, they know Uncle Raja is there and he has their back. So wow. I can't let them fail. Yeah. You know, that's how I live my life. And like, you know, so so whatever I'm doing with like trading or whenever it's like education, innovating, trying to grow. There was a podcast I was listening to. Um, there's this guy called Les Brown. Yeah. Right. Like you've heard of him, right? Yep. Les Brown. So when we were doing door to door sales, we used to listen to this motivational speakers and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. And he was saying that you can't just rely on one option. Mm. You need to have some other options along the line, because if your one option fails, you can bounce to your option B, yeah. then option C and option D. What people do wrong now is they have this option A and they have this limiting belief that, OK, I if 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 my my option A has to work. Mm. It, it it has to work yeah what if it doesn't work yeah right nice. they they listen to these guys they say oh if you have an option b your option a will never work man that's all bullshit yeah it is you know like you need to have multiple options option a fails perfect you got option b yeah then you got option c yeah. option d yeah so okay so now from there that drive that passion and i can feel it like here uh, just between this here i can yeah, feel yeah. the passion and the ambition that you have so now were you learning with uncle ted at the time, like how, how did you learn back then? Because it seems like the education space was like it wasn't as big as it is now, like yeah. as many books, as many YouTube videos. Bro, back then we had I very, very clearly remember we had Q Banks was there. OK, right. Uh, then there were um, Astro FX. They've just fallen off the cliff now. And so what we were doing back then was we had a little group we had and we were just, you know, learning on our own. We were looking at price action. We were so so. We were in Canada, and from Canada, we were looking at 
CAD and USD. Okay. Because, you know, the US is right there and yep. we're in Canada. So USD CAD made, yeah. sense, made sense. Right. And that's all what we did. And for the most part, we did private Zoom webinars and we would do Zoom webinars during pre New York uh, from like 630 to like 8, 830. We used to do those webinars and we would just like, you know, talk about trading. They're okay. The four R can is about to close. The one R can is about to close. Looks like we're forming a support. Maybe a buy would make sense here. Right. If a candle closes in our direction. Oh, OK, perfect. OK. You know, take a buy. We took yeah. a buy or like whatever. Right. So very, very simple, simple things. Yeah. So that's how we were learning on the fly. Right. And then we would see what guys like Q did. We're like, OK, that made sense. So let's see if that's something we can incorporate here or like, you know, back then we we were also using a lot of indicators too, OK, like stochastics, MACD, RSI. Because, you know, Going in the whole library. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. like in the start, you don't know what to do. Yeah. You're like, OK, and just indicator is going to tell us to buy here. Well, perfect. Let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So. So. Uh, so what was like when did you have your, your first big success? Yeah. Right. Like that changed your life or for you was like, all right, this is it. I know I can make big money. Um, I remember I went to my office because we still had an office at that point um our sales office and i went to my office and i was up 1100 us dollars mm, okay. right i was up 1100 us dollars and i got out of my car and i told one of my buddies i'm like bro listen like i'm up 1100 us dollars which is like 1500 canadian before i'm even stepping in the office yeah for a sales meeting yeah and he looks at me he's like yo raj your day is done I'm, <laughs> and then i said to myself I'm like, yeah that makes sense yeah because at that point, we were doing sales, right? And per sale, um, our commission. So, so there was so okay. So for the past nine years, I've only worked on commissions, no hourly pay, nothing, right? Yeah. So per sale, we were getting like twelve to thirteen hundred dollars per yeah. sale, and I was up like fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars. I'm like, man, shit, my day. He's right, my day is done. So that occurred to me that okay, this is actually real because before coming to your job. You can make the amount that you would make in a sale or you can make the amount that you would make in a week or in two weeks. Yeah. You know, that's powerful. Yeah. You know, there's nowhere else that I could do that, which would have such a low barrier of entry because trading has a very, very low barrier of entry. Yeah. You got does. leverage. Yep. You know, you got volume. Yep. You got volatility in the market. Yep. So so that was the turning point where I was like, OK, like, you know what? Maybe this could be something more. Yeah. So then what was the worst trade that you've had in, worst the, in, trade. The, in the early start? Did you have any big losses like before you had good success? Yeah, I'm not going to say my biggest loss came maybe last year, but emotional loss was in the beginning. Yeah. Right. And that's the biggest loss. Yeah. Not emotional. in terms of monetary, like, like monetary that was like, now when I look back, it was like a, maybe like a, like a 12, 13, thousand dollar loss yeah. but emotionally it destroyed me mm. what happened was um it was asian session after asian open and gold was moving towards the resistance and i thought that gold has broken above resistance so i took buys you know i took buys I had like a twenty thousand dollar account i took a four lot buy at resistance that we broke above it then gold rejected came down and i took another buy four lot buy and gold moved up again. So I took another four lot buy. So now I have 12 lots running and gold went further down. Now I'm thinking that, okay, gold is moving down probably to do a retest, you know? So at that point I was working at my dad's store, right? So I'm like, okay, okay. Like, you know, I'm going to close down the store. Like I was helping them out with it. Yeah. So it was my turn to go lock up the store. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go sit in my car and start driving home. Right. So I put my phone in my pocket and I walked to the parking lot. I sat in my car and I'm like, okay, let's check the phone. I checked the phone and you know, the thing loads, right? Yeah. The empty, f I think it was empty four back then. It loaded and it was like a negative 8,000. I'm like, oh shit, negative 8,000. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to look at it again. I'm going to start driving and hopefully yeah. I'm going to see some profits, right? And I start driving. I look at the phone again. It was like negative 10, 11,000, something like no that. No stop loss? No stop. Well, I had stops. Okay. But then I removed the stop losses, right? So then I called my buddy. I was like, bro, I'm in negative now. What should I do? 
you know and he's like he looked at the gold and he's like yeah like you know this should go up i'm like i know it should go <laughs> up. it's going down man what should i do yeah and then like you know your friends can't help you yeah right it's your trade your responsibility yep. and you are 100 percent responsible for every trade that you take yep. whether it's in a loss or in a win yeah you know and i'm like man and i took that loss at like negative 14 negative 13 mm. thousand something like that yeah and that just destroyed me you know i went home i cried and then i'm like man so next day i looked at it looked at the trade now i had to look at it from a very logical perspective right yeah i was gonna ask how did you recover from this loss like this emotional loss yeah and i think a lot of guys go through that and at that point i said my whole life is destroyed Mm. my life is destroyed i'm shit yeah, I'm losing money. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You know, and a lot of guys message me with that too. Hey, man, like I lost 10,000. My life is done, blah, blah. And I looked at it logically. I'm like, okay, my life is not destroyed. I still have food to eat. Yep. What happened over here? And there's only one thing that came to my mind. I removed my stop. You removed the stop. That's yeah. it. You removed the stop. That's it. Yeah. So you learn from that. Keep the stop loss. Yeah, don't remove <laughs> your stop. <laughs> what about doubling down? It seemed like you, you were adding to the loss. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I removed my stop, right? Yeah, I removed my stop, and initially I was looking at the thirty-minute time frame, but then I started to look at the four-hour and the daily. Yeah. You know, so I put my stop based on the four-hour and daily, telling myself that oh, it's a swing trade now. Yeah, you know, and a lot of you guys do that. A lot of you guys say oh, it's a swing trade now. Yeah, <laughs> with the big risk. Yeah. And you added more positions. It sounds like more yeah. Positions. Yeah. See, okay, all right. Now, so uh, we'll talk. We'll get into like, to your trading a little bit more now, right? Yeah. Like um. The successes talk about the successes right so what was like your biggest trade like the most amount of money you made on one trade three hundred and forty thousand dollars three hundred and forty three hundred forty thousand right? dollars so you're at a point where you lost 12k yeah you thought your life was destroyed yeah. so listen to this everybody <laughs> he thought his life was over <laughs> he, he persisted like like he did with sales like he did in his childhood like moving he made an adjustment that passion drove him and then he ended up making 340k in one trade right yeah. so just what do you feel? How do you feel now? Like, how did you feel at that point? What did you learn from that trade? Um, so that was when Russia and Ukraine thing was happening. Oh, okay. Russia and okay. Ukraine thing was happening here back in February, right? Yeah. I had a buy on gold. I wasn't looking to make that amount. I was looking to maybe like 80, 90 pips, something yeah. like that. But it was just two one hour candles. Two one-hour candles Dang. blasted like 25, 2700 pips, Dang. you know, and the thing was loading and it showed like 370, 380 only. Oh my God, this is so, so, so whenever you see that big of a number, your mind goes numb, Yeah. right? Like a yeah. lot of guys say, oh yeah, I was expecting to make half a million. I was expecting to make the, uh, this much. No, you don't. You're not expecting to make that much. Yeah. Your mind goes numb for a little bit, mm. you know, cause you're like, okay. I wasn't expecting this. Let me take a look at that. You look at the chart and you see just like bullish candles. So I saw 370, 380, 370, 375, and then I saw 350. I was like, okay, time to close. To close it. I closed and there was a little bit of a lag delay because when you send those big of an orders to liquidity, they get like weird fills, you know? So it Damn. filled me out at like 340, 345. Yeah. And I was just like looking at that. I'm like, wow. Damn, that's uh that's uh that's a Lamborghini Urus right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So I saw that you took 50K yeah. to a million, right? Like in mm -hmm. six months. Do you normally like take a small amount and build it up? What's your thoughts process behind that? I think most of the prop traders, they don't understand the idea of compounding or mm -hmm. don't think about it because we think about getting this big account, making one to two percent versus taking a smaller amount and compounding it up. Right starting to risk more as as the account grows. I think you brought on a very good point. I think with this whole prop firm thing, people have stopped looking at the importance of compounding. Yeah. Because they're already getting this inflated account. There's no ambition to compound the account. There's no ambition to compound the account. There's no yeah. ambition to compound because you already have a hundred thousand dollar account or like a two or like a half a million dollar account. You're like, okay, I'm just gonna focus on this payout. So I do focus on compounding. So the reason I did fifty K was that because I'm not going to say that was all the money I had left because we like, you know, we open up the brokerage. We have to put up some money for liquidity. I had like maybe a hundred, 130, 20 cash left. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to deposit 50 K 
and we'll see where I take it from there. Okay. So, so if we go like back, that. if we go back real quick, yeah. Before starting the brokerage, right? How much like did you start with, and then like, did you, how much? How did you compound that? Oh, super uh, easy. Yeah. Just uh, being a good trader. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> joking. <laughs> yeah. So, so, um, so, so I was trading with IC markets. Okay. In the beginning, I was trading with IC markets, and we were doing pretty good with IC markets, and you know, and then IC markets sent us an e email that they'll be leaving Canada because Canadian regulation or whatever. And then I moved to Vantage FX. Mm -hmm. uh, we were trading there and it was very simple trading. It was just like- How much were you making like a month or so? Like every, I mean, it's not, you know, trading is up and yeah, down, but- I, I'd say like 30, 40,000 a month, something like that. Okay. But, uh, but um, at, and that's all recorded on my Instagram and everything. Yeah. And uh, it, it was about, so what we were doing is we were trading wick fills, mm -hmm. right? And the idea was simple. Whenever price makes a high in a trend, there's going to be retracement, right? And then there's an 80% probability it's going to retest that high. Yeah. Or if it's going to, like, you know, make a low, it's going to retrace, it's going to create resistance. There's an 80% chance it will retest that low. Okay. And that's all we were looking at, right? Okay. And there was a very high probability that we will win the trade, we won the trade, and that's how I made most of my money. What time frame was this? 30 minute time frame. 30 right? minute time frame. Four hour wick fills, daily wick fills, and then 30 minute, 15 minute market structure basically okay okay that's all what we did how long were you in a trade like so this is going to like your trading style like how long were you normally like it's like scalping yeah like um 30 minutes 15 minute trade 20 minute trades okay, okay right so we were doing like you know five lots one lots two lots you know depending on how much volume there is stuff like that so advantage effects i paid about seventy thousand in commissions mm. in 2020 Okay. Right. Seventy thousand dollars of commissions I paid to Vantage Effects, and I started to think what about were your this, profits right? at the time. Profits, I think I did about maybe seven fifty, eight hundred k. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. And um, and so whenever you're a trader, right, and you start to do like close to a million a year, two three million a year, you start to think about that. Okay, how much am I paying in fees? Yeah. Right. And when you look at your fees, now this is for me looking at it from a, like a business perspective, right? Yeah. I'm looking at these fees and I'm like, okay, so if I have my own platform, my own firm, mm -hmm. how much can I save in fees? Yeah. Right? So that's when I started to think about it. I'm like, okay, so how can I have my own platform where I can save on fees, trade at the same time, yeah. get better fills, so in, in a way that I can make more money at that point. Yeah. Right. So that's how this idea of like, you know, starting a brokerage for myself where I yeah. can save on fees came about. OK. OK. So w we'll get more into the brokerage. I want to ask a little bit more about the, the trading style. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. So um, I, I saw that you made money with the Ukraine war, the announcement. How much does fundamentals like um, factor in how you trade? Not a lot. Um, okay. I mean, fundamentals, let's say that I don't really look at fundamentals only if there's like a major event. Yeah. Like what's happening now in the Middle East. Yeah. That's something I look at a lot. Yeah. Uh, COVID, I looked at a lot. Um, like, you know, these major events the are major something events, yeah. that I look at a lot. Yeah. You know, because because these events, they drive gold. Yeah. Right. So yeah. either gold is going to go up or it's going to go down. So whenever there's going to be a major event and there's going to be peace talks, gold is going to retrace. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So those are things I look at when it comes to like news events, CPI, NFP, FOMC, whatever. I just use buy stops, sell stops. I don't want to guesstimate where price is going to go, what number is going to come out. I could care less. Okay. Right? Okay. Because news is not something that's going to make you money. It's pure gamble. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's why. So, so whenever we have a live stream, whenever there's like, you know, some big fundamental event, I say, welcome to Raja Banks Casino. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're at the Raja Banks Casino, yeah. and we're gonna use buy stops and sell stops. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Also, also one thing I'm not gonna look at is, oh yeah, last week and NFP was this, and based on that, and based on what Powell said or whatever, price now should go here. No. Yeah. No, it's just just price action. Otherwise, it's price action. Just price action. Um. So you trade gold, GJ. Now that's it. So a lot of people ask, um, how do you choose a pair? Mm -hmm. I saw a nice video you did about that. Yeah. Right? So. So can you talk a little bit about that? Like why you chose gold maybe yeah. in GJ? Yeah, so um, I chose gold because gold has a lot of volume during the times I trade now. Pre-London, London Open, pre-New York, New York Open. Great, right? 
pound yen are chose because pre London London Open from pound yen, pound is the only thing that's moving the entire pair, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So I want to choose a pair that's being influenced by one currency. Yeah. Pound yen during London session, perfect. Yeah. During New York session, perfect. Yeah. Asian session, perfect. Yeah, I right. See. But pound USD during a New York session, nah. Yeah. Because you got pound and USD open. So now you have two forces trying to move one pair. Yeah. Right. But pound USD during pre London and London session, great. Because you have pound moving the whole pair. Yeah, I see. That makes a lot of sense to me. Especially if you know like um, the macro events that are that are going on in the UK or the BOJ. Right? Yeah. Um, all right. So now let me ask you about like consistency. Like where did you first find your consistency? I heard you talk a lot about, you know, one trade a day uh, or I'm sorry, like two trade, just two trades a day. Right. Yeah. Um, so can you talk a little bit about like once you like I think you've been trading for how many years now? Since 2016. Oh, so eight, seven years, eight years, eight years in 2024. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Eight years in 2024. Yeah, man. So wh like what year did you find? Like, Feels the like most yesterday. Consistency? Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what year did you find the most consistency? The first week, <laughs> bro. <laughs> seriously, I was consistent. I was consistent the first week, mm -hmm. you know, because all what we would trade is four hour candles closing at support or resistance yeah. across all major pairs. Okay. That's all we would trade, right? Okay. Let's say um, you have AUD USD for our kind of close at a resistance take sells with yeah. a 10, 15 foot stop. Yeah. Right. We were very consistent making like great money. I turned a $700 account to $5,500 in three weeks. And I was like, man, I'm top shit mm. because when you start to make that kind of money at that time, you're like, man, this is a money printer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And every trader goes through the cycle in the beginning where they make a lot of money and they feel like, Oh, I have a money printer on my hands. They start to make these, plans oh i'm gonna retire my parents i'm gonna buy them a home i'm gonna like you know like secure the future for my wife and my kids and i'm gonna do all these things yeah right that happens to everyone and i'm sure that happened to you too yeah definitely. right in the beginning yeah. and then reality sets in so i was consistent the first week the first two three months and then i was like okay time to make some more money try time to really churn up the gears let's learn about indicators oh. right <laughs> and then i started learning about Fibonacci, stochastics, MACDs, RSI, Bollinger Bands, EMAs, the 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 714. I don't even know. Like like all these things I started to learn about, and then my profitability started to come down. Yeah, you changed the plan. It started to come changed down. I stopped using my stop losses. I changed my trading style, and I'm thinking to myself, man, I'm learning all these things. Why am I not making money? Yeah. Right, and <laughs> that destroyed me, yeah, you know. And then I talked to my mentor. I, I talked to Ted, right? And I'm like, bro, like, I was doing so good. You know what's happening over here? And and he told me just just look at what you were doing back then, mm -hmm. and now look at what you're doing now. Yeah, you know. So when I looked at what I was doing back then, I was trading set amount of times. I was trading only at 1 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Eastern, one one five nine. One, five, nine, because those are times where the four hour candles were closing. I had a plan. Yeah. Right. And I deviated from that plan. So I started losing. Yeah. yeah. You know, so then I went back to my original plan. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do that once a day. Okay. Right. Yeah. I'm going to trade the four hour candle once a day with one or two pairs. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. So I talk about on the channel, the idea of a playbook. And you have these set of rules or set of plays that yeah. you trade. That's what kind of like what you had is like, I trade this time, I trade these rules, and that's it. You deviate away from the playbook. But once you went back, you started making the money, making money again. Mm. But then the next thing is risk management. Like, what is your risk management like in order to be able to compound a smaller account to a larger amount? Because in most of the prop traders' minds, they think you're over leveraging. That's how you're growing the account. Okay. So it's like, okay, this guy must be, if he took 50K to a million, he must have been over leveraging, like risking 20%, 15% on trades. Yeah. So how, how does that work? So there are three things I do, okay. right? Number one thing I do is that I focus on risk. Whenever I'm in a trade, I focus on my downside all the time. 
Yeah. Right. Because in the beginning, I would focus on, okay, how much money am I going to make? Right. But, but no, the thing is, whenever you're in a trade, whether it's a profitable trade or it's at almost like you're lingering at break even or lingering at like a little bit of a drawdown, you're always thinking about, okay, how am I going to lose less? Yes. A lot of times because in the beginning we're told, oh, you got to focus on keeping your losses small and your winners big. Right. But it's the opposite. Right. Yep. It's the opposite in a way that when you go in a drawdown, you're 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 letting it run. But when you go in profits, you're like really being impatient. <laughs> you're closing every yeah. two, three, five pips, yep. but you're letting a drawdown run in infinity. Yep. Right. So I was like, OK, whenever I'm in a drawdown, I got to focus on risk that how am I going to lose less? Then planned. Yep. Right. Number two, the second thing I focus on is okay. How much am I risking at this point? Right. Sometimes I risk one or two percent, mm -hmm. but sometimes when I'm really confident and let's say if I've made money Monday Tuesday, I'm gonna risk five percent. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna risk sometimes yeah. you know five to seven percent. Yeah. Because if I'm not gonna do five to seven percent on a setup that I know has a higher probability to work in my favor, yeah. I'm losing money. Yeah. Basically. And, and this is the practice of pros. Like, I, yep. as I mentioned, we were talking, like I paid for a like, professional education and they have grades of your setups. It's like you have an A setup, mm. B setup, C setup, right? Yep. So they may give the B 1%, 2%, yes. but the A or A plus, they like they say you better give it 7%. And I remember listening to uh, a book, uh, Market Wizards, and one of the guys, he was George Soros, his uh, mentee. And he was like, I think he put, you know, a million risk on. And George Soros was, was like, that's all you put on? I thought you believed in this trade, right? So he was just like emphasizing, like, he's like, if you if you believe in this trade, you need to put more on it. Right. Yeah. So I think that's a factor that people miss when they think about compounding. They think you're just risking 1% every time. But no, you're saying that, okay, you're confident some trades based on your experience. So you're going to load up on those yes. that you're really confident in. I think that's a lesson for the prop traders because I think, a lot of people just preach like only 0.25% or only 0.5%, but I'm a big believer that you can't maximize the trades or the account unless you, you know, you risk. But bro, the thing is if the prop traders do that, the prop firm is going <laughs> to fail them. You know, they're like, Oh, you use too much risk. No, that's a fact. I, I recently canceled. got denied a payout. <laughs> really? Literally. Yeah. Who? Yeah. It was top tier. So yeah, I mean, I risked 0.25% actually on a 300 K account okay. and SPX 500 and it was yeah. already past their five point lot max i was i was pissed off you know oh. <laughs> but you know you got to move on you know what yeah, I'm saying? yeah so yeah um but yeah so you, you were mentioning the number three when it comes to risk management yeah so number three was understand what profitability ratio you sit in during the week right so okay. what, so that's an interesting one yeah yeah so what i mean by that is like let's say on monday right monday if i have a profitable trade i'm gonna i'm gonna take all those profits like i'm not gonna let any trade run on Monday. If, if I aim from like, you know, 15 pips, 20 pips, I'm going to take those 15, 20 pips. Tuesday rolls around, right? Tuesday, I'm going to make sure that I do 15, 20 pips. If price goes in negative, right? I'm going to manage my loss. Now, if Wednesday rolls around, if Wednesday rolls around and I know that I've made profits Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm going to let my trades run. Uh, okay. That's my rule. Okay. I'm going to let my trades run Thursday. I'm going to let my trades run. But if I'm loading up on Wednesday or Thursday, I'm 100% guaranteeing myself that I'm going to manage my risk. Because let's say if I risk 1% on Monday, 1% on Tuesday, and now if I'm loading up like 5% on Wednesday, I have to make sure that I don't lose profits from Monday and Tuesday. Uh, see, so I'm very strict on my risk management. Yeah. Very strict. It's dynamic, but it's very, it's a very strict. Very, very right? strict, bro. Very strict. And guys tell me, oh, like you're so strict on risk management. Of course, I'm risking 5%. Yeah. Right. And as soon because like, here's the thing. When price goes in profits, right, that's good. If price goes to break even, now you got to make a decision. You got to make a decision. Right. Yeah. If it yeah. goes in a drawdown, that's on you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's you not, were in profit. Yeah. That's not yeah. on your mentor. Yeah. That's not on anyone else. That's on you because you were in profits. And if it goes in drawdown, that's all on you. Yeah. Now it's up to you. How are you going to manage that as soon as it comes to break even and negative? So how do you generally manage? Do you like let it go a certain amount of pips into profit and then oh, go break even or? Oh, yeah, bro. Like if my if my position goes in, like, let's say 10 pip profit and from 10 pip profit, profit if it goes to break even i cut 50 percent yeah 50%. oh you're cutting 50 percent. okay because okay. sometimes like you know when you cut the full thing 
and then it goes back, yeah. you're like, oh man, I missed out on this trade. So cut 50%. Yeah. I cut 50% knowing it can go in a drawdown and also knowing if it goes in profits, I still want to be in the trade. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if I it like goes that. in a drawdown, then I decide, okay, before it hits my stop, do I want to close another 50% or not? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That but the point sense. is to stay in the trade. Stay in the trade. Yeah. Yeah. Or re-enter. If yeah. it goes back in your in your in your direction. Yeah, exactly. So like I used to be in the camp of like, OK, I'm setting TP and setting stop loss is going to hit either or. But once I started doing like more professional education, these guys are actively like managing these trades. Like, as you mentioned, like, OK, yeah. we're cutting some, putting some back on, cutting, yeah. cutting as it goes more in the drought, I'm going to cut some more out, you know. Uh, and I understand now that like my, my profitability is like stronger now that I'm mm-hmm. doing things like that. Right. Um, so uh, what's the most you risked on a trade? So you had consistency. You know, you're making money like now you get to the sizing up stage. Like wh- how, how much have you missed? Like, how, how much have you risked on one trade? Accidentally or like on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> no, purposely. <laughs> um, I remember I remember the first time I used the 50 lot and that was so. So like, OK, this is something that everyone goes through, right? There's no methodology of increasing lot sizes. And I think you're going to agree. It goes from 0.05 to 0.10. Mm-hmm. To, yeah. to to point five yeah. to one. Yeah. <laughs> then from one to one point five to two, then two to somehow three and five. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, and then yeah. five jump to ten. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I was on twenty five lots, twenty five I moved to forty, and instead of forty, I'm like, nah, fifty. Let's do mm. fifty. Right? So I did fifty. I think this was back in twenty twenty when the COVID was happening, right? Yeah. So they were talking about cases coming up and cases were coming up. And I'm thinking, man, okay, all these cases are coming up. And every time they talk about new cases in the U.S. and Canada, price gold just shoots up. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's just drop a 50 lot, mm. right? Let's just try to make more money. This is an intuition type of thing. Exactly, Something intuition. That, so you, you put in the grind, you put in the grit, and then it's just like intuition activated at the, at the moment. Yeah. All of your experience kicked in. You're in the zone and you say, I'm going to just drop a 50 lot. But also the question is that, how do you know? That's the, that's the next right? question, right? Right. How, so, so this is how I know, right? So, so I have seen Brexit, mm-hmm. right? I've seen Brexit. I didn't capitalize on it because I don't know what the fuck was going on. Yeah. Right. And then, um, there was a flash crash in October, 2016 on yen. Okay. Right. Where pound yen just dropped. Yeah. Right. I didn't capitalize on, on the retracement. Then Trump came in in 2017, right? Trump came in and gold rallied and then gold dropped because he was pumping the U.S. economy, yeah. right? And I didn't know what the hell was going on, yeah. but I was just watching and learning that, okay, he's saying certain things, blah, 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 whatever, right? 2017. Then Kim Jong-un started firing missiles over mm-hmm. Japan to test them. Yeah. No idea what was going on, yeah. right? Then long story short, COVID came. COVID came. Before COVID, there were trade um, a trade war between U.S. and China. I kind of knew what was happening, but didn't uh, uh, didn't really what's the word capitalize on it, right? Mm-hmm. And then when you had COVID, I took all that missed experience and I was like, all right, we're gonna capitalize on this shit, <laughs> right? Then COVID <laughs> came, we're like, perfect. Uh, uh, rates going up of infections or like COVID, like cases, gold gold no. goes up buy gold yeah right and yeah. every time they would announce this new breakthrough vaccine what happens to gold gold goes down yeah because the vaccine means the economy is going to go back up yep. when when economy goes back up gold goes back down sell gold yeah right and <laughs> man that's crazy man it's crazy how uh that experience, experience. you missing out you seeing it yep. and then you were just you were there at the right time i think a lot of people they think of luck and they say oh, man this guy is lucky because he, he you know he was at the right place in the right time but if you weren't showing up all those days and seeing things you would have never been able to capitalize right so but not, but i me ask you about expectations now that you've made so much money like how do you check your expectations like do you expect to make a certain amount of, amount of money or do you just follow your process like you know where are you at now with that when it comes to trading bro absolutely absolutely you expect to make a lot of money like if you're good let's say if mm-hmm. you're good at basketball you expect to make the hoop yeah. You expect to win a race. You expect to do a home run. Yeah. Right. Anything less than that, just don't do it at all. Mm. You know, because if you're entering a trade, you're expecting to make, let's say, like 3K or 10K or like 20K. You're expecting to do that. Yeah. Like in 
in um uh september my i ended the month at like negative thousand dollars i didn't expect to make money because i didn't put in the work i didn't look at the markets i didn't look at the charts nothing i didn't do anything like that right so when october rolled around i saw the volatility i saw what was happening in the markets i saw what's happening around the world i was like okay i'm expecting to make some money in october and that's what happened mm -hmm. like i'm closing october with five hundred thousand dollars in profits because yeah. i expected all this to happen a lot of guys like you know when they enter a trade they enter a trade with this fear mm -hmm. that oh i don't think if i'm going to win or not if you don't think you're going to if you're you're not going to win or not focus on that okay if i don't think i'm going to win i may be able to manage my risk yeah. i may be able to lose less than expected i don't give a fuck about winning or not yeah. let's try to focus on can i focus on losing less yeah. than expected yeah. when you can do that bro here's, here's the thing right you can't control the amount of money you're going to make you yeah. can't yeah. but what you can control is what you're going to lose yeah that's right. Right. If you can control your downside, the upside is going to be there whether you want it or not. Yeah. Right. And that's, I think, very uh, tough for people to understand. Yeah. Right. And also, like, you know, guys tell me, oh, Raja, how can I be prepared for the next big event and this and that? I'm like, listen, just study what's happening now and really understand that big, these big moves are going to happen over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Because when you're a new trader, you see these big moves happening. You feel like I've missed out for life. Yeah, yeah, that's how it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, man, damn, I'll never get another yeah, chance. Yeah, 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 right? Yeah. But then once you get some sort of a maturity in the markets, yeah. after three months, you're like, oh, shit, that move happened Same again. Same thing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same cycle. Right? Same cycle. Okay, so with everything going on with prop firms, mm. right? You've been very vocal, yeah. right? I lost the counts with the MFF situation. Um, I was promoting them on my, my YouTube just because I was using them. When they went down, <laughs> people were like, you should go down with them because <laughs> because you were mentioning them on your really? own YouTube. Yeah, I'm like, what the hell? Like, I, <laughs> I lost the counts too, right? I was a victim as well, right? So uh, they're like coming with pitchforks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like coming down. after me, right? Um, yeah, so uh, what, what would you, like, let me ask you, just props weren't, weren't around when you started, right? You sort of grinded your way there. Yeah. Like, would you use props if you if they were there? Bro, we'd never started? know. <laughs> we'd never know because I came from the mindset of grinding ten dollars, hundred dollars a day. I yeah. grinded hundred dollars. I grinded like ten cent lots, mm -hmm. fifty cent lots, one lots. I grinded my way to yeah. where I am now. Yeah. You know, and I think traders coming now have it so easy. Mm -hmm. If you can't make it now stop trading mm. seriously stop trading because the barrier of entry to a large amount of money is so small now yeah right yeah. and 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 like with all these prop firms coming up you know the rules are so relaxed yeah because yeah. every prop firm is competing with each other yeah they have sales every week it's yep. like like black friday every day for them yeah if you were just starting over mm. how would you approach it if you were going to go with props how would you approach the challenge how would you approach getting the payout if let's say I started trading last month. Okay. Right? Yeah. If I started trading last month, I would buy a prop from challenge, right? Obviously, because mm -hmm. I don't have a hundred thousand to trade, I don't have fifty thousand to trade, and I would probably fail the challenge. Yeah. Right? I I probably fail eight challenges out of ten. Yeah. Right. And I would never go to a funded stage. Right. So so that's like a big majority of that's a great majority people yeah. where they are. Right. Yeah. A very small majority is who do consistent payouts and then they blow up. Yeah. Right. So let's talk about the big majority yeah. who just keep paying into problem. Right. So so here's what I would do. I would load up an account with a thousand dollars. Right. And I would trade that thousand dollar account. Yeah. I would trade that account to maybe like fifteen hundred or like two thousand dollars. Forget about 1% risk or whatever. I'm just trying to make money on the $1,000, right? And yeah. and I know a lot of traders who can who can flip 1000 to 2000 1000 to 5000 I know a lot of them, right? So I do that. 1000 to 1500 or to 2000 I would withdraw 500 and I would go buy myself a funded challenge. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So when I do that, I've proven to myself that I can consistently win yep. because I've turned 1000 to 2000 or whatever. Yep. Next... I have proven to myself that I can have a withdrawal yeah. from a brokerage. You tasted it. I've tasted it, right? Yeah. And a lot of guys make this mistake of not withdrawing money. Yeah. If you don't withdraw money, 
it you can't feel it yeah yet you have to have it in your real. hand yeah. to feel it right yeah so third thing i've learned is that i'm consistent yeah i've consistently withdrawn money and now i can test my skills yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah i think a lot of people and it's, it's just kind of weird some people kind of like they skip the learning stage and they just buy a challenge and they just keep buying them right bro even prop firms you know it's so it's it's the way they advertise and the way they run it's so predatory mm. it's so predatory i say it over and over again and guys say oh roger you're i'm not against it's just so predatory say oh hey come to us and trade this hundred thousand dollar account look at all these people making money you yeah. can make this money too you know all these interviews they do yeah. those interviews are marketing for their packages you're right yeah you know there's yeah. no prop firm out there who says well now they say you know 80 percent lose there's yeah. no one says that hey listen only come to us if you are a consistent trader yeah so do you think that they're more predatory than just the average broker because they have more voice or is it just the lure of trading the 100k account that's that's what the that's what makes them more predatory i think brokerages and prop firms they're on the same predatory level i would say but i think the i also think the allure of trading like a hundred thousand dollars it's more appealing to a small trader let's say from developing country you know who haven't seen that money now they're saying oh like you know if i trade this amount i may change my family's future yeah yeah right and same thing i said i mean i'm in, in the u.s i just say hey yeah it was different i, I grew 100 to a thousand and that was a grind so i yeah. was like how i'm gonna get from a thousand to 100k and the allure of the prop firm came yeah. right okay so for you so, that made sense yeah it made sense because i, I had went through that that yes, grind exactly. right so once i stepped in first challenge i had to do repeat but the second i passed it you yep. know, so I think, but I wouldn't have done it without the grind, right? That's so true. I think what you share with people, I think people need to go through that step, those steps of, you know, growing an account or at least proving consistency in demo. But do you think demo would be the same or? Demo is not the same. Okay. Demo is not the same because the, there's no live money involved. Yeah. Okay. Right. So you have to, you have to put money into an account. Yes. And get that withdrawal. Yes. It's That's your just recommendation. like going to the gym, right? If you're a newbie and you go to the gym and second day you start to do a, a, like a, a cycle on or whatever yeah. <laughs> it's not gonna work out well yeah. right but if you've been working out for like two three years and then you do a cycle it's gonna look great yeah right so prop firms is the same thing it's it's forex on steroids yeah right if you're a consistent trader prop firms awesome do yeah. it right but if you're a new trader yeah it's a uphill climb man yeah, so <laughs> with all the controversy going on you're looking at the industry like from the mountaintop because mm -hmm. you've you've seen different phases and, and things right so what, what do you say to the trader that's kind of skeptical of prop firms now? Would you say steer away? Would you like, how, how would you advise them? I mean, I know you're not in the prop space, but if you know, your cousin Abdullah came yep. to you, <laughs> what, 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 would, what would be your advice? Like, I would say forward? Abdullah. So are you consistently trading now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Consistently, consistently trading. Yep. trading. Okay. So monetary wise, have you like uh, hit like a, plateau like you know some guys hit like 10k and they can't pass 10k right 10, yeah yeah right yeah, yeah okay yeah so so if you hit a plateau maybe try this fifty thousand dollar account at a prop firm or like a hundred thousand dollar account yeah because you've hit a plateau you, you can trade you're consistent you're withdrawing money try like a hundred thousand dollar account and see where you go with that yeah what do you see the industry going though like you knowing about regulations like in canada and the yeah. u.s you know like what do you see like, happening to the firms like from your perspective i don't know man i think i think there's going to be more regulation happening in the u.s like anything to do with providing cfds or like you know some sort of derivatives yeah, blah, 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 yeah. whatever the word is right to like canada and the u.s it's a very gray area right you can't yeah. so i think regulation is going to come in i think and also think the regulation is not a bad thing it's a good thing because whenever there's an industry that's thriving there's regulation that comes in same thing happens with binary options same thing happens with forex same thing happens with you know online poker uh, online casinos stuff like that so yeah, like so would you recommend they diversify just kind of look at the the landscape and and or look outside the u.s i would say maybe look at a, a company that's outside of the u.s okay yeah okay. outside of us and outside Canada. of the u.s yeah because exactly. of the potential 
what could happen. We don't know. We what, what we don't know what's gonna happen, and I can't even say something that's gonna happen because then, then guys are gonna come back. And, oh, Raja said this. You know, he he yeah. lied. I mean, I yeah. don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, no, for sure, for <laughs> yeah. sure. All right, so uh, last last few things on trading. Then we'll move to like Magic Keys mm -hmm. and you know the other uh, like the brokerage, right? So, um, so there's like three traders that are probably watching, like the guy who is who is just struggling, you yeah. know. What, what would be your message to him? Like you coming from where you came from and seeing the success now that you have now, like this guy's just struggling. Maybe he's doing props. He's, he's not really making money, but he sees you doing it. He sees me doing it. Yeah. How, like what would be your message to him? Man, I'm just Raja from the block. <laughs> I'm Raja from the streets and Raja knew that Raja had a dream. You know, I yeah. had a dream and my dream was to be a provider, to be successful at whatever I'm doing. That was just my dream. Yeah. You know, and 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 for me to get to that dream, there were certain things I had to do. And those things were based on consistency and discipline. OK, that's it. No, discipline. no matter no matter how much I tried to rush the process, I fell flat on my face. Mm. Like rushing the process, it didn't help at all. Yeah. Like when you try to run, when you can't run, you're going to fall. Yeah. You know, so all you can do is walk. Then you walk fast. Yeah. Right? After walking fast, you start running and then you sprinting. You start to take more risks. Yeah. Right. But you have to have a cushion. Like a lot of young guys come in and they say, man, I'm like, you know, 20 years old and and like, you know, I'm in I'm in like college now and, and I want to have Forex as my full time thing. It's not it's never going to I'm not going to say never because one percent do make it. Yeah. But if you're in ninety nine percent. You can't be the one percent. Yeah, it's not going to be something for everyone, right? So you need to have a plan B, a yeah. job, or like some, some sort stable of a, income. That's yeah, coming exactly, in. right? Yeah, like you, you, you need to have some money coming in so that can basically, uh, like you know, fund your hobby of trade. So that that consistent money coming in, if you if you just totally rely on this one trade, it can uh, mess with you emotionally. Exactly, bro. There are a lot of people out there who take loans from their parents yeah. who take money from their friends to trade because they've you know ran up a demo account or they've ran up a fifty dollar account to a hundred dollars yeah and and they they blow all that money up yeah man you know, and they're all like young guys they're yeah. like early 20s you know even even in, in their teens they 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 blow their family's money they blow their tuition yeah because they've seen some one like me make it yeah but they don't understand i'm 36 years old yeah you know i'm 36 years old i've been through college university i, I work jobs man like i'm mature so if you're a young guy don't do that yeah get a job okay work your job grind your way and yeah then slowly start to dabble in it yeah slowly start okay yeah and I, I love that now how does i how do i navigate the space there are certain tribes mm -hmm. that are dominating like social media What's right the like tribe? So may maybe it may have like ICT, like, oh, yeah. you know, like ICT or um, just other like groups. Like, how do I navigate this different space and know who to go to, who not to go to? What would be your advice there? See, I'm not going to comment like a lot of things on this uh, cult tribe ICT, like, you know, because, OK, so so when I first started, I looked at a lot of information. There's a lot of information, right? There's yeah. a lot of information. There's one guy called Akil Stokes. OK, have you heard of him? I think I've heard of him. Yeah, it sounds like I've heard of him. Akil Stokes. He's been around for uh, more than a decade, right? And and I used to watch his videos a lot, you know. And his videos were just price action, just candles. I'm surprised he doesn't have the amount of reach I have mm -hmm. because I started trading by looking at him. Yeah, you know. And uh, and uh, and and then I also s dabbled in this. I saw this ICT stuff, and it didn't really makes sense at this point because I'm not that smart. You know, I'm not that smart. It was too complicated. There were a lot of fancy words which I didn't understand. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to leave this alone. So if you're a new trader com coming in, I would say maybe stick to something very simple. Okay. You yeah. know, once you master that simple stuff and if you want to learn something more, let's say you want to do a PhD or whatever. Yeah. Just go to ICE like if, you, if, yeah. if, if you want. But just stick to the basics. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Start with the basics, Start right? Start with the basics. Okay. And we know a lot of great ICT traders like yeah. uh, Paladin and, and, you know, some of our other uh, guys that we know. So another trader, another trader is he's going, he's trying to go from good to great. This guy is making some money. He scaled up a few times. How does he, how does he start to make a million? Like, how does he go to the million dollar trader status? Like, how does he get there? 
you got to envision a good lifestyle at that point. Mm. Right? Okay. You got to walk in a home that you can just dream you're going to buy. Mm. Right? Go to like, go to like, go to open houses of big homes. Yeah. Right? Go to open houses of big homes. Rent that, rent that car that you want to buy. Right? Go to like clubs where people buy boots, which you can only imagine of buying. Right? Mm. So, so when you do those things, when you put yourself in situations where you're like, okay, I wish I could do this or, oh, I wish I could have this car that I'm renting now. Yeah. That kind of like opens up your vision a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. because, because when I was stuck at a certain point, I was like, okay, I have one house in Canada, but now I, I, I know this guy, he has 150 apartments in vancouver bc mm -hmm. i know this guy who has five homes in in four different countries like, okay that's another level where i can be or i know this guy who has like four supercars uh, for god knows what yeah. right but he has them yeah right those are the same people who breed like me eat like me and they all bleed the same yeah we're yeah. all the same but but i'm at a level where my bills are paid yeah. i'm comfortable yeah right i'm good yeah what can i do to get to great yeah yeah. Right. So those are so things. It starts with vision. Starts from the vision. And you need to go inside of that house. Exactly. You need to ride in the car. What's what's Roger's long game? You have trading. You did the live streams. Big YouTube presence. Just trying to be alive, man. <laughs> <laughs> just, just trying to be alive every day. That's a, yeah. that's my long game. Yeah. But uh, but uh, so um, this is something in 2019 I talked to about with um, Etienne Trades. I don't know them. Yeah. You know, okay. In 2019, I told him that I want to have some sort of like a ecosystem of all traders mm -hmm. where they get everything in one spot. Mm, right. Okay. It was like a, like a very, very like an abstract vision I had. Yeah. And n now when I look back at that and, and now when I look what we have now, it's the same thing. We have a brokerage and in that system we have education magic keys we onboarded a prop firm and like mm. it has built an ecosystem yeah right my long game is to probably build the companies to a way where we where we can have like a multi eight or nine figure exit something like that and okay. then move yeah. on to something else okay you know also um we're heavily investing in property as well brother there's something very, very interesting that happened yeah right um I got complacent at one point. Okay. You know, I got very complacent based on my work ethic, right? Okay. And that comes from, you know, in the beginning when times are tough. So when we bought our first home in Canada, after buying that home, after down payment fees, whatever, I had like maybe like 12,000 left in the bank, mm. right? And I'm like, okay, I have 12,000 left in the bank. So that pushed me to work harder, mm. grind harder, yeah. right? I grinded harder and harder. And then a point came where we had like excess of like four, five hundred K mm. cash. Yeah. And we're like, oh, yeah, we're comfortable. People think that like as you're growing, you're just sitting on hundreds and hundreds of K's. I heard Grant Cardone. He talks about how he's like, you got to get rid of that money. Yeah. He's like, you got to get rid of it. And then it's going to motivate you. And the, the creativity is going to kick in again yes. for you to make more. Yeah. What you're saying right there, I just want, you know, the traders to, to understand, like, you're not just sitting on a million and like, oh man, I'm good. So you come to a low point and then that that right there is drives you to go go higher. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like now we just invest, I think, 80 to 90 percent of everything that we make mm. into like property, commercial real estate. I have a lot of property in Pakistan. We're buying property here in Dubai yeah. just so that I don't have cash with me, mm, with man. me or in the bank. Yeah, because when I look at the bank, I'm like, oh, shit, I'm broke. Yeah. I don't have any money. Yeah. You know, now we got to start to be creative, do some more things. And I'm like, oh shit, this is going to be a hassle. <laughs> right. But like when I had some, so whenever I have like a big amount in the bank, I'm just like, you know, comfortable. Yeah. I don't want to grind because I'm comfortable. My bills are paid this and that, but no, yeah. you got to get rid of that cash. Yeah. yeah. You got to get rid of it so that your instinct to survive kicks in. Kicks back in kicks back but in. you have to have some balance i know you have some times when you enjoy yourself and yeah, yeah like absolutely. I, at first like your your content was mainly like trading value yeah i've seen like now you posting more like you got a roly you know yeah. uh your, your ferrari you know like what was what was the decision there like to start posting more about your lifestyle um in the beginning you know i 
I always posted about my lifestyle back then too. Like, you mm-hmm. know, when you bought the house, you bought the car, I show off my Civic, I used to <laughs> show off my Kia, yeah. you know, but now I'm just the same, the same life, it's interesting, but a man. different car. Yeah, it's interesting. Like nobody, now that I think about it, I saw the Civic, I saw- You saw that, right? I, like, I didn't think about it. Like, you know, it was but like- But the Ferrari clicks the more. the Ferrari clicks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then, then, then the Civic, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay, man, that's, that's something about human nature, yeah. It's the same life, yeah. but different things I have. Yeah, things you, that's, different that's, things you that's have That's now. all it. Like, yeah. I'm never going to say, oh, you need if like you need to have a Ferrari to be successful or you need to have a Rolex to be successful. I'm not going to say it that, right? Because it's just a car that's going to take you from point A to point B. Yeah. You know, a point came where where my assets were, okay, so the, all the cars I own now, their value is 10% of all the assets I have. Mm. You know, so that's the reason why yeah. I bought the cars and bought the watches because the passive income coming in from the properties, they pay off for, for, for those things. Yeah. So it's levels. I see the levels here, right? Yeah. When you go into a new venture, yeah, like somebody taking on a new trading market, um, do you hesitate, or are you the kind of person that just thinks of the idea and then you just kind of like go into it right away? Like you just jump out, just I just like bounce. Build the plane while you drive, like while you're flying. I just bounce, man. And mm-hmm. and my wife gets super pissed at this because because uh, an idea is gonna come to my mind. And I'm gonna post a story about it, and then she'll say, "How come you didn't tell me first? Mm. I'm like, right, "This came to my mind, <laughs> right?" Yeah. So, so I'm very impulsive yeah. with ideas, business ideas. I don't really overthink a lot. Yeah. You know, like a lot of guys, you know, they overthink. Okay, if I do this, okay, how much do I need? What do I have to do? What's the numbers gonna look like? The import duties, taxes, whatever. I don't think about that. Okay. You know, if I have an idea, I'm like, okay, let's execute. Let's think about the numbers later. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. You mentioned your wife. Now, I think a lot of uh, there's guys and girls that are watching. Um, yeah. Majority is guys, right? Yeah. Can you talk to them about like the importance of selecting a mate, like your support system? Like it seems like your wife has been there supporting you through the ups and downs, man. Yeah. So it's man. Like, here's the thing. Um, whoever's going to be with you, they got to see the things for you. Mm. Right. It's because. At times, you know, like your partner or whatever is going to say that, oh, like, you know, it can't happen. It's very difficult. you got to be real stable, blah, blah, this and this and that. But like, you know, and it's not their fault. You don't have to blame them. It's their perspective, yeah. right? You have to change that perspective. Or you can say, okay, like, you know, that's fine. Just keep it to yourself, mm. you know, but it's very important that, that the people who you surround yourself with, they see things for you through to you. Mm, right okay. for you through to you yeah. like if you're trying to be let's say a great speaker right they need to believe it for you that you will be a great speaker yeah right like you got to be around people that think the same things yeah right or your 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 social circle needs to be the same way yeah because like you know when when we moved to dubai right um it was a big change because now now okay in canada i was like you know like super good Pakistan, way good because, you know, like the economy, whatever. Uh, moving to Dubai, I got a little bit humbled, you know, mm-hmm. because because here I am driving my Ferrari. Then there's a guy whose number plate is worth more than my car, <laughs> you know. So so I'm like, OK, now this is a different level where people play on a different uh, uh, field. Right. And yeah. I'm like, OK, like what can I learn from them to incorporate that into my business? The environment. The environment. Environment yeah. is important. I see a lot of guys, they're still hanging out. They they may hang out with people that, you know, aren't where they're trying to go. And I'm not yeah. saying, like, you need to sacrifice your, your friends or whatever. No, you got to sacrifice them. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Because what are they going to talk about? They're just going to talk about, oh, my boss is this, my job is this. Oh, yeah. it's all bullshit, man. Yeah. Like, that's probably what they're going to talk about. So if you want to be a great trader, you need to get around good traders, yeah, great traders. Around, exactly. People that are farther than where you are. Exactly. That's another that's another just a, a simple uh, uh, piece of wisdom <laughs> that a lot of people aren't aren't using. Yeah. OK. All right. So just a f- final uh, one question. I've been watching the live streams and I've watched this massive growth and people are always skeptical. So from a human perspective, like how do you feel when people say that you're scamming like your 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 trades weren't real? Okay. Uh, opened up your own brokerage because yeah. you wanted to, to fake your, your profits. Yeah. How much money do you think Candy Crush makes per day? Millions. Wild guess. Yeah. Per day. It's three million a day. Four point eight million dollars a day. Dang. 
that's what Candy Crush makes, which people play on their toilet breaks yeah. at the office, yeah. right? That's how much. So you look at that perspective. You know, if I'm making, let's say, 10 million in profits in like two and a half years, almost three years now, that's not, that's, that's peanuts. Yeah. That's nothing yeah. to me. Okay. To some people that may be a lot of money. Here's the thing, right? When you achieve a level of success, it breaks boundaries of regular people. Mm -hmm. They yeah. can't fathom that amount of success. Yeah. Right. Also, you've got to look at it this way. My account never went over $3.4 million. Okay. Yeah. I kept withdrawing. Yeah. It never went above 3.4 million. I kept withdrawing like 500K here, 500K there and all that. So, S there are people who say, oh, Raja, you did great. There are some people who have these limiting beliefs where they can't believe that someone who came from the same place they came from made it in life beyond their wildest dreams. Yeah. They, they can't digest that information. Yeah. And for them, I say it is what it is, man. Like, <laughs> there's nothing I can do or no yeah. one can else to do about it. Yeah. So how much have you made from trading? Trading, I think it's, over, it's, it's close to... 17, 18, something like that. Mm. 17, 18, 17 million. 18. Yeah. What was your biggest but, year? But in eight years, I'd say. Like. Yeah. What was your biggest year? My biggest year was 2022. Okay. How much did you make in that? 20, in that it year? was like close to like six, seven million, something like that. Seven in one, million, in one yeah. year. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> before that seven. But, but. Okay. That was all what was happening in the world. It was, you, was, like you were, but you were there. You, you were I was able, there. You were able to, uh, you were able to take advantage of it. Yes. Because you were, you were showing up. Yeah. Exactly. You showed up all those days. Like all those days. You, you didn't, you didn't quit. I caught the big runs. You caught the big ones. Yeah. I caught the big ones. You know, yeah. like, like, like all these big news that happened on gold and gold just rallied. I caught all those moves. Yeah. Because I watched them from 2016 till 2022. Mm. So that's like five yeah. six years of studying that data that's a degree and then being able to capitalize on it yeah you know and that's how the game is played yeah you've you got to spend you got to sacrifice that time yeah right if you're not going to sacrifice that time you're never going to be able to make it and someone who does make it you're going to point fingers but then there are also three fingers pointing back at you yeah. of what a failure you are <laughs> <laughs> right yeah so, yeah you're right when i started maybe about a year and a half into my journey, um, I found Magic Keys. Yeah. Right. And a lot of my audiences have seen my videos about Magic Keys. Right. So, um, you know, how did you get started with Magic Keys? Like, were you the founder and you worked on like product development or did you like, was somebody uh, starting it and then you just like uh, worked with them or kind of came on board? Yeah. So basically I have a, I have a, I have a friend who work at uh, hedge funds. Right. Okay. And they have this keyboard that they have. And this keyboard basically maps trades to their systems, right? Yeah. So they press a button and they get a map on the screen and da, 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 like, yeah, hotkeys, right? But mapped to like physical keys. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting mm -hmm. because for MetaTrader 4, MetaTrader 5, CTrader, we don't have this. Yeah. There's just mouse. And by the time you're moving the mouse to close or buy or sell, you've already missed a few pips yeah. because you've got to be quick. Yeah. Right. So there has to be some level of fastness or when you're trying to uh, like, you know, put in the correct lot size, you're opening up the lot size calculator. You're going to some website to do that. That has to be right there in front of you. Yeah. I'm like, OK, we need something like this. So I put up a post that I'm looking for someone to program a script to manage risk and this and that. And there was there was one kid. He was in university um, in Italy. He sent me a thing picture of a calculator type thing that with uh, some labels on it that he was already doing something i'm mm. like oh shit that's interesting wow yeah and then we we talked and i'm like hey listen you'll have to leave university if you're gonna work <laughs> on this <laughs> and he left university damn I, you know now he's doing really, really well so he left university and then the magic keys was born at that point yeah like, you man know? i mean so like for me i love that visual like you hit the open calc 
Yeah. And then you have the TP and the stop loss. It's magical, it's right? Magi- yeah, yeah. I mean, and then the, the thing about it is you don't have to calculate the lot. Yes. I had this big, massive Excel spreadsheet, like for US 30. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm typing in the stop loss, yeah. like points. Yeah, with the account size. I'm doing this every time I take a trade. So oh. I'm missing out a few seconds. Yeah. US 30 is gone, right? Seriously. So so once I saw once I saw Magic Keys, I bought it right away. Open calc. You can drag the stop loss. Yeah. Lot size is already calculated yeah. for you. And then I was big on risking the same amount. Like, so okay. having that consistency in the risk was that because like my strategy is risk to, uh, one to three, one risk to, to three. reward, okay. right? So it's like, okay, if I, if I take three losses, then the, the, the win, you know, on the fourth one will take care of those losses, right? So the magic keys helped me there by keeping the risk the same. So that really helped me out. So thanks, thank you for, uh, you know, creating the product, right? Um, so like, what's, what's next for magic keys? You know, any, any new updates that you kind of have in the pipeline or are the people are asking for? So our motto is this, right? Whoever uses MetaTrader 4 or MetaTrader 5, they need to have magic keys with them. Yeah. Just like in a car, you have a seatbelt. Yeah. Right. So magic keys is a seatbelt for your MetaTrader. Like, I think so far we've sold like maybe 20,000 units mm. and that's a lot. Yeah, you know, that's like a lot. Yeah, that 20, is a lot. 20,000 units, like, I think like, like 17 to, to something like that. Yeah. Right. So, so that's what we're trying to do. Just like spread the word to everyone who has MT5. Yeah. So now I want to ask about the brokerage. Okay. Right. Because this seems like a big daunting task, mm. right. To open up a brokerage. Like you have the OANDAs out there, you know, these other firms or whatever. So like, I know you say you started the brokerage because you wanted to uh, save on commissions, Yeah. you know, but how, how's that been like for you, like starting the broker, meeting liquidity providers? What are some of the challenges you've had? Like, Oh man, like learning about so much things, learning about like the flow you sent to liquidity and learning about, um, like, you know, like, like, so there was a point we lost $300,000 because we didn't manage the flow to liquidity mm. correctly. So I look at that as like a fee paid to learn a very small thing. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so then also like managing traders, managing risk, um, like, you know, sometimes, you know, the, f- the bridge breaks, the bridge is something that connects to liquidity to your meta trader. So that malfunctions. So got to learn how to deal with those issues and then the support teams and all that. But then our biggest, um, our biggest struggle was how are you going to be different? Yes. Right. Because there are a lot of brokerages out there and we're like, okay, the way we're going to be different is that we will incentivize traders with education, you you know, like my, uh, 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 market fluidity and then we're going to incentivize traders with magic keys and that's what we did yeah. and based on that man like the the influx of clients and profitable traders it grew so much that we had to hire i think like four or five support agents in the first three to four months and i thought i could just do it by myself but no now we have a pretty large team and um yeah i think that's what something that really helped yeah man so when differentiating yourself education you said education is one the magic keys is another um i think when i think about the brokerage as well is being regulated yeah that's another thing that i saw so i saw you when you first started and then i saw how you were uh you went and got regulated so i'm like okay no, roger in, in the beginning <laughs> we were offshore yeah <laughs> unlicensed yeah you know, untrustworthy brokerage yeah <laughs> you know? yeah when i saw you got regulated then you won an award with uh, uh in dubai yeah i said okay roger's serious he's serious about the brokerage um yeah. so yeah that's that's pretty good um man if you're gonna do something you do it right yeah and you go all in yeah you know and and people are going to say whatever they're going to say. Yeah. You know, and and whatever people say about you, that's none of your business. Yeah. You know, it's their business. Yeah. Right. And what you think about yourself and what you think about where you're going to take things further, that's none of their business. Yeah. That's your business. So yeah. that's how I have looked at everything. Right. Because like there was a time they made memes about me, my family, whatever, blah, blah. Mm. That was none of my business. Mm. Right. That was nothing to do with me. Yeah. Uh, all I could do is to focus on myself, myself and focus on my business. Yeah. You know, so that's why now we have a regulated license. We're in Dubai now. We won three awards. I won an award for a CEO and then the brokerage won two awards. So, you know, like we're taking things very, very seriously. So, all right, just a few closing questions. I want to give a shout out to Riz for helping me uh, get in contact with Raza. Let's go, Riz. Uh, yeah, <laughs> appreciate you, man. Um, so, uh, you know, you hear the phrase, if I only knew 
X, right? Then I would, you know, I would do this, right? So like, let's, let's look 10 years from now, right? 10 years from now. Okay. Like, say Roger's what, like, you know, 46 or, or so. 46. Right. 46 ripped. <laughs> Yeah. jacked <laughs> yeah what what would what would roger then tell advise roger now what would be your message to yourself now that's very tough that's very very tough right because i'm 36 now and if i had to advise roger when he was 26 it would have been to save money mm. to s yeah to save money that's what the advice would be but i have a lot of friends who are in their 40s and who are in their 50s right and they all tell me to play by the book they all tell me don't break rules okay it's okay to break some things like it's okay to bend some rules yeah but play by the book play okay. by the book and you're going to thank yourself what you were 10 years ago okay but like you know at the end of the day you can make all the money you want i think if you got health if you can stay fit, you can exercise, you can keep your body fat low, yeah. you're going to thank yourself in 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the main thing. That's the main thing I can, like, in 10 years, man, like, I don't know. Professionally, I think I may be a consultant to my own brokerage if we do, like, a, like an exit or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, but it's hard to say, man. But as I said, it's trying to be alive for the <laughs> next 10 years. Yeah, yeah. So, um listen if you if you're listening in go back to the beginning when i quoted from the magic of thinking big see what i said about roger right so you get a big thinker you get a person that is persistent through losses he lost 300k right with the uh he lost he lost with trading took big losses with trading he took a a big loss when he opened up the brokerage right um but what you see is a combination of this big thinking and then persisting right and then he's not caring about what others are thinking um, you know, think big, you know, 10 X your goals, right? Whatever, whatever you think you can do 10 X those goals, uh, and then be persistent. Right. And you see that Roger represents, you know, persistence. So I know, uh, this has been an honor, man. I, 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 I couldn't have imagined meeting you <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, when I first started, I'm just like yeah. you, man.